Welcome to this episode of Caillou Talks. I am Caillou Ninja, and I am super pumped to get this podcast started. Let's go to the chase. Today we're going to talk about being a trailblazer, exceeding expectations, going above and beyond. Today, we're going to talk about being first. Condoleezza Rice once said, people who end up as first don't actually tell to be first. They set out to do something they love. And speaking of first, this is the first episode of our free part series of Being First. And my guest today knows this well. Shalene Reyes is the president and CEO of Union Savings Bank, a bank in Danbury, Connecticut. And he is the first person in the Filipino heritage to serve in that role. Mr. Reyes has born in, was born in the Philippines, an, an island nation in South Pacific, and came to the United States when he was in fourth grade. Green Savings Bank is a local community bank that offers personal business and commercial banking. Previously, he has served as the senior vice president at Hudson Valley Credit Union. Mr. Reyes has 20 years of credit union and international banking experience, both in the United States and the Philippines. Mr. Reyes also served on the board of directors of New Horizons Foundation, an organization that provides services to individuals and, de- and developmental disabilities. Mr. Reyes hold, holds a master's degree in business management from the Asian Institute of Management in the Philippines and currently resides in the Hudson Valley area of New York. He is an avid five sports, sports fan and an assistant coach for Muay Thai at Precision MMA. Wow, that's a lot. Let's meet this man in person. Mr. Reyes, talk to me. Tell me about your life. Growing up in the Philippines, your journey to America, your family, talk to me. Well, Caillou, first of all, thank you for having me. I am very uh, grateful to be your first guest for the first episode of your first Trailblazer uh, series of shows. So <laughs> thank you for having me. I think it's super cool, and it's a great honor to be here. And I think you or yourself are doing a great thing. And, yeah, it's true that uh, I came from the Philippines. I was born there, came to the United States around fourth grade. My mom was uh, involved in, she had an opportunity to uh, do something for her career and she was assigned to Singapore for a couple of years. And during her time there, I was uh, living here in New York, in the New York area with my uncles and my aunts. I went to school here for a couple of years and then went back to the Philippines to finish high school. particularly junior year high school, senior year high school, and then college. Worked for a couple of years, got my master's degree, um, as you mentioned, in business management. Worked there for maybe one or two more years and came back to the the U.S. The jobs that I did have right out of college were in banking. So that's where I got my first start in banking in a marketing capacity, supporting a group that did international banking type of businesses. So I thought that was really cool. That job allowed me to, or gave me exposure to different things regarding marketing and understanding people's thinking, how they make decisions, people's behaviors, what they like, what they don't like, so that the bank can be effective in offering them the things that they need and that they get their products from us. One of the cool things about that job was that I had to do a seminar type of thing for Filipinos that were going to travel overseas and work abroad. And back then, these groups of people, the reason why they did that to begin with is, one, they wanted a better opportunity for work, and two, they needed to support their families. So when they go abroad, they send money back to their families in the Philippines. So my bank's role was to provide a way for them to send those funds and deposits back and forth. So before this group of people would leave to get their certifications to be able to go work abroad, they go through a one-week type of seminar. And one of those sessions is a bank speaking to them about international banking products and services. That was one of my jobs. So I went there. I was a very young person. I had to stand in front of big groups of people and talk to them and explain things about the bank, be engaging and make sure they have a good time and hopefully that they take our products and services when they leave. So I thought that was very cool. Um, It allowed me to develop 
uh, my public speaking skills and uh, organizing my thoughts and being articulate about it, just like how you are, just like what you're doing today with your podcasts. So it's been a cool journey uh, getting here, and I, I've been banking for a lot more years than how old you are right now. So I'm a, a pretty old guy compared to you. But I've certainly enjoyed uh, the journey, and I've learned a lot of things. I've learned not things that not just to do, but a lot of things that I've seen also what not to do. So I thought that was very cool. Okay. So I also have another question. Yep. Your name. It was, it's very cool, very unique, and I heard a story behind it. Can you please tell that to me? Yeah. Chalen is okay, but it's not as cool as Caillou. I, I like your name better. I think it's that's a, a cooler name. It's a popular Brazilian name. Yes, and I love it. So uh, Chalen um, is a name is a name that was made up. It was it was a combination of two names. I was born in 1972, a long time ago, in the Philippines, and during that time, there was a lot of uh, political instability in the country, and the feeling of um, change and political uh, advocacy and political activism was very strong. And my mom was in the field of uh, political science, uh, and, and she was uh, in the academic field. And because of those sentiments and feelings in the country, there was a lot of considerations for uh, people who revolutionize things. So my name is a combination of the Che is from Che Guevara. He's from Argentina, was a very big part of the Cuban uh, Revolution. And the Len is from Lenin. And Lenin is a Russian uh, philosopher, uh, a political theorist. And he also led uh, a revolution um, during his time in Russia. So my parents, being the political activists that they are, said, you know what? Let's combine the two, Che and Len. Let's call him Che Len. So they came up with that name. They took me to church and um, to get baptized as a, a Catholic because that's um, uh, we were my family was generally born and raised a Catholic, and they took me to church and they said to the priest, "Here's our son." And he said, "What's his name? His name's Chalen." Well, we can't baptize him, and they're like, "Why not? Because that's not a Catholic name. That's a made-up name." Well, my father's name was Enrique, so in order for him to get baptized, they said, "Well, let's make his first name Enrico." So um, there you go. That's the quick little story about my name. So wow. So it sounds like you had a very, and they had a, quite the story behind it. Yeah. Sometimes it's interesting. Sometimes it may bore people. Yeah. Well, not me, of course. I think it's it really cool, very interesting. I kind of like that story. Thank you. So did you learn any? So of all the things that you have found, during your life, of all these accomplishments, I could tell that you have at least learned a lot of lessons for this this journey of of all these great titles, all these great achievements that you made. So, what's the biggest lesson that you believe that you have learned in your life? It'll be hard to pinpoint one, a, a single one, Caillou. But I think what is important to share with others is. It would be great to have a vision or a plan or an idea of what you want to be in the future. Once you have that vision and um, uh, direction of where you want to go, you can kind of set your path and make decisions in your life towards that towards that goal. And you know, it it, it some of these things over time are not easy. There's going to be a lot of challenges and obstacles. But if you remain focused with your end goal, you will tend to get there in some way or form. Now, uh, you also have to recognize that sometimes plan uh, things don't go according to plan. Things may go sideways. But it's nice to check every now and then and asking yourself, is what I'm doing today, this very moment, or my, what I'm planning to do in the next couple of days or the near future, is it still aligned to the direction of where I want to go. So that helps in being able to stay on track despite all of the obstacles. And I think that's important uh, to lead to people's successes. The other thing that I've learned over time is that perseverance, just 
persevering and overcoming challenges because there there will be that. Me as a uh, personally, I started my career uh, uh, at a young age and kind of accelerated through my career in at, at a very young age. So there were times where the people who worked for me were much older than me, and when you're in that situation, it, it, there's a potential for you know, having to prove yourself to these people that have been working a little bit longer than you, are a little bit more mature than you, and now they're reporting to me. So th- there's those types of challenges. There's also challenges of being a minority and being an immigrant. And it may be seen as, well, you know, who is this person uh, kind of telling me what to do? Not only does he seem young or younger than us, he doesn't even look like he's from here. So there, there are those challenges that, you know, that come along and you just have to make sure that you stay on track, you stay focused, you uh, uh, obtain the information and education and skills that you need to allow you to progress in your career. On a personal front, in terms of interacting with others, I think it's important to just be kind and be a good person and be empathetic. And I did not have always have all of these skills and thoughts in my head, but as I matured, I started to understand that importance. And if you combine staying focused with work, persevering over your obstacles, and being kind and empathetic to people, you will see that not only will you be successful in life, you will also be very happy. And sometimes those two things don't go hand in hand. But if you can be successful in whatever you chose to do in your life and be happy, I think that is the ultimate prize of everything. And you know what? Being kind and empathetic doesn't cost anything. What's your biggest inspiration? I, I, again, it's hard to single out um, uh, uh, one person for inspiration, but I'll tell you this. When I had my kids, that became my biggest purpose. It became a big purpose to do well in life. It, it gave me a chance to create or provide uh, somebody or some individuals a life that maybe I never had and teach them things to allow them to overcome the things that they need to in life and progress also, be happy, have great values, have motivation, and be successful in their lives. So whenever I, you know, in a tough situation or I'm starting to feel tired or I'm getting ready to tap out because of all things I have to do, I think of my kids and that inspires me and gives me energy to continue doing more. So I hear you're a fighter's coach. What can you tell me about your coaching? Coaching is an interesting thing, and there's a lot of disciplines and thoughts that go behind coaching, and I love it, and, and, and I enjoy it a lot. Um, I've been practicing Muay Thai now for uh, over 11 years, maybe closer to 15. I've competed myself in the amateur circuit in the uh, New York and Connecticut area, and when I got to a point where I figured that I should take down my own uh, uh, training, and my own uh, competing in, in fights, I chose to try to pass along what I know as much as everything that I know in Muay Thai to others to allow them to be successful. The beauty of the martial arts uh, discipline is that you're continuously learning. Even if you have 15 years of experience, the opportunity to learn more things or new things is, is pretty much endless. And when you coach somebody, to be effective in what you're doing, it's important that you understand, one, that person's current capabilities, what they're good at, where the opportunities are, and also how they process information. It's also good to understand where this person is in their uh, in their martial arts journey. Not everybody wants to compete and fight, and you don't have to, to do martial arts. Um, some people do it for fitness. Some people do it for camaraderie and having a family type of an environment. Some people do it for self-defense. And sometimes some people go there to just be with their friends or to be with their kids so that they can do something together. So as a coach, one of the, one of the greatest feelings is that when I show somebody something 
and they actually apply those techniques. And if they're competing and you see them in the ring or in the cage and I'm in the corner helping them compete and they execute and they win. So to me, that's very exciting and it gives me energy. But I was just speaking to somebody about this the other day and we were talking about attending martial arts classes. And one of the things that's important there is that sometimes, most of the time for martial arts training in classes, you're paired with somebody. You have a partner to drill and to practice whatever the techniques are. But there will be days when you are the one showing your partner how to do something because you're more advanced, you have more experience, and you're kind of like the coach or you're the teacher to that person. But sometimes you'll get paired with somebody who's more advanced than you and can pretty much uh, do whatever they want to do when you're engaging and sparring or something. And in those days, you're the student. And you shouldn't get frustrated, oh, this person kept you know, uh, tagging me or hitting me or submitting me, whichever those things are. You shouldn't get frustrated in those days or I got partnered with somebody who's not good and I'm not really going to be able to train or practice my things today because that's the role that you interchange when you're going through your martial arts journey. That's very similar to what happens in life. Sometimes I'm showing people how to do something I'm mentoring somebody. I'm teaching my group or team members how to do something. But sometimes I'm learning also from my own colleagues. There's a lot of things that I don't know in banking, and I'm thankful that I'm surrounded with people who are experts in what they do. So it's a very nice correlation between the martial arts life, business, coaching, and being a leader. Okay. This is a deep question. Oh, no. Are you ready for this? All right. Let's see. Let's see. What do you want your legacy to be? My legacy. Wow. That, that That is a pretty deep question for this podcast over here, but that's a great question. I want my legacy to be the success and happiness of my family, specifically my children. If I can leave this world uh, and knowing and being confident that my I, I was able to help my kids have a good life, then I would be happy and satisfied. That's in my personal life. Now, in terms of my... Uh, uh, work life, I would love to see Union Savings Bank to be the primary bank of choice for everyone in Connecticut. And when I say everyone, that includes people like us who live or have households or families and friends in Connecticut, go to school, go to church, or you work here, that group of people. I also would like small businesses to choose Union Savings Bank as their primary bank I'd also like for municipalities, nonprofits, charitable organizations to be uh, working and, and uh, having the bank help them with their finances and with their wealth, as well as all of the commercial customers around here who are building things, building factories, building homes, building malls, building hospitals, things of that nature. That if, if I can retire from Union Savings Bank with that legacy and I can look that all of these companies and people in Connecticut that needs banking services come to Union Savings Bank and then we're actually able to help them elevate their financial lives and situation, that would be great. The last piece that I would like to look back on is how I've impacted my employees. My hope and dream is to help this bank continue to grow so that I can create opportunities for my employees. If the bank grows, if it gets bigger, it becomes more successful, I create more opportunities for the employees in, in, in our bank. And when they grow within the organization and become more financially successful, so do their families. They could provide for their families better in terms of support, education, being around for them, um, all of those things. So... If I can, I mean, it sounds simple to say, but those are three very tough things. But if I could accomplish all of that, I think I would be very happy. Mr. Rays, before we do the ultimate challenge, is there anything you'd like to add on? You know, I will say this. Because of challenges and doing things for the first time, first time that I may have done or not done something like this challenge we're about to do, I will say that it's been very important for me to have the support of my wife, Karen. And um, I've talked about focus, succeeding, being happy, empathy, and legacy. And um, I really owe a lot of 
what, where I am today and what I'm doing today to my wife who's been very, very supportive of everything that I do. I do wish she was here right now sitting next to me holding my hand before I do this challenge because I don't know what I'm going to get. So is the last part of it the most exciting one? Let's get to it. Let's do this. Let the challenge commence. Okay, here you go. Do you face the blue guard? Blue. Okay, okay we just went over the rules, dude. All right, great. My, I'll get my no, blue. No, Want me to start again? Spin again. Spin again. Let him touch his own Okay. That was a better... Still blue. Okay. It's meant right, to be. It appears yeah, that the no universe choice. wants him to have two ways to move, Okay. All right. Let's go. Okay. We're doing this three times, so don't get too relaxed. Real blueberry. Oh, nice. okay, Kai. Okay, your turn. Peach or ball? Nice. God, God, please. Just go all in. I gotta son. take a whole bite. Just go all in, son. It doesn't, yeah. it doesn't look like peach from over here. <laughs> That's not a peach face. Was that peach? I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> I'm victorious! Yes, you what are. was All it? Right. All right, Barf. Oh, it was? Okay. I think so. Let's go. <sighs> Lordy, Lord. How, how many times do we have to do this? Three. This is the second time. Uh, what is that? What is that one? That one is butter popcorn or brown egg. Okay, which color is it? The it's white one. White and yellowish one. This right one. Right over here. This one. Yeah. One. Uh, no, no, no. The one next to it. The one's like more white. This one. Yep. Give me, give okay. me the, give me the lid. It tastes what it's supposed to taste like. Butter popcorn or rotten? Egg? Butter popcorn. Okay. Why, why is he? This is the first guess that we have. That's so lucky. Mm -hmm. Still winning. It's been very. For some <laughs> yeah. Marshmallow okay. stink bug. A, a balut jelly. Oh my gosh. Stink bug. Mm. You got stink bug? <laughs> it's either that or what? Like, it's oh, either. Marshmallow. Mm. Oh. You got this. I believe in you. Oh. You better give me extra hours for this. Go all in. Go all in. Go all in. Look brave. Marshmallow. There you go. See? Oh, oh, all right. This is my last one, right? It's your last one. <laughs> Come on. Come on, life. Okay, red ish. Okay. So it's pomegranate or a dirty bandage? Kaya, Kaya, he's got it. He's got dirty it. bandage? Yeah. Yeah, dirty bandage. You can't smell it, huh? No, you can't. Mm. Ah! You give up? There's other words for it. <laughs> Do you give up? It's not dirty bandage. I give up. Yay! I win! <laughs> now, that was kinda, the first time I got stink bug or marshmallow and I got marshmallow. It kind of tastes like an old leftover Cajun shrimp. Mr. Rays, thank you so much for being here with me on Kayu Talks. I learned so much from Shailen Rays today. His role as a husband, as a father, as a business leader, as a fighting coach, but most of all, as an inspirational person who is able to do something he loves. And by doing something he loves, he has become the first Filipino American to become the president and CEO of Union Savings Bank. And just goes to show that if you can do the right things, not because you have to do it, because you want to do it, great things will happen. That's it for now. Thank you for joining me, Kai Ninja on Caillou Talks.